Okay. Um, yeah, just look at the game again with the players. Uh, had our team meeting, uh, finished up our walkthrough, made our corrections like we normally do um, on this day. A um, little bit different week because the guys had uh, Christmas Day off yesterday, so we gave them off and they came in for a normal Monday. Uh, now we're back to a normal week uh, starting on Detroit. Um, so just to recap the game from yesterday, kind of much what I said yesterday. Um, I told the guys after the game about uh, you know a couple of things about how we need to do a better job of running the ball and stopping the run, you know, and then really we did win the ball. We won the ball. We just got to capitalize on those. You know, we're through a late interception, but we were you know plus one, plus two, however you want to look at it. But we got to capitalize on those um, from from yesterday. So that's really the biggest thing. And I thought the special teams uh, in that weather really operated well. Um, did a good job. Valus did a nice job on the kick returns. Uh, you guys all saw that. Uh, the operation for the, the the punts, you know, the snaps and the punts were good. You know, it's not easy because the ball is, you know, going sideways um, at times. Uh, you can certainly see that on our first uh, kick we made. Um, you know, the ball was uh, really uh, going sideways, floated up in the air, and Trenton did a nice job of putting it down. Um, nice clean operation there, and Carroll did a good job with his kicks as well. Um, our cover teams were good. Um, punt and pin on the one, you guys saw that, got a three and out. Um, got the ball back to midfield on 12-yard uh, kick return by uh, – Dante, which is good. Uh, but overall, like I said, the kick teams are really good, real solid there. Um, and really just, uh, you know, obviously the weather was, uh, was, was a big factor in that. I thought we handled that well. You know, obviously big conversations for a lot of different things, you know, whether to, you know, defer or to take the ball. So you have wind in the fourth quarter, all the different things that you have to talk about. Um, and the wind was really, uh, it was more of a swirling wind. It wasn't really one direction or the other as, as much as, as we thought it was going to be uh, for that type of factor. It was more of a sideways swirling uh, type of wind, which affected the game uh, pretty dramatically. So uh, I thought our guys handled it pretty well. Um, and with that, I really, uh, I didn't get a chance to say it the other day, but, you know, just to thank you for the fans, you know, those get coming out there and that weather, um, you know, and supporting uh, the Bears, supporting us. Uh, was was really outstanding. They, they're, they've been great all year, and I certainly appreciate those guys doing that during those conditions, for sure. Uh, with that, I'll open up to questions. What's the status of Justin as we get here today, and what's your sense of if he'll be able to go this week? Yeah, he's good. like I said after the game. You know, he got stepped on. Um, he's good to go. He's good to go. He's healthy. He's ready to go for this week. And there's been no consideration of just shutting him down because of all the... Absolutely not. Um, because we got to get better. You know, we want to improve. We want to get our, our team. Um, we want to see where we are. Um, we, you know, these last two games matter. They're division opponents to us. Um, very important to our football team um, to see uh, the competition, to see uh, guys, uh, you know, compete against our division. And I think it's uh, it's important for each man, and it's important for each unit, and it's important for our whole football team. Luke, and Nether, um, I, I think Tunoco had mentioned the other day that – Comparing Justin from the first Packer game to the second, you could see the growth. Yep. Um, is there a benefit to you know being able to make that same comparison between Lions two and Lions one and, and Vikings two and Vikings one? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, when you get a Lake opponent and the Lake skill set, you get a chance to see you know the schemes are real similar. Um, you know, so it's always a good comparison to do that. I think that's a good good idea. Yep. Optimistic about any of the guys that were doubtful for last week, Claypool, White, yeah. or Jenkins. You're hoping to have those guys back. Yeah, we are optimistic at about a few of them. You know, we'll see how it goes. We got the preliminary report today, um, but we'll see in the next 48 hours before we get to that. You know, Wednesday practice. So hopefully, we'll see. We'll see where those guys are, but uh, we are hopeful for a few of them for sure. Which guys did you get a positive outlook on? Um, you know, we'll just wait for the medical thing to come out. You know, we don't, I don't want to say something prematurely and then it's not the case. So just let, let time and, 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 you know, and, uh, we'll see where it is in 48 hours. Are you guys putting anybody on IR today or tomorrow? Uh, not to my knowledge. I don't know. We are not. Man, after watching the tape, did you notice anything that Buffalo did to kind of contain Justin and preventing him from, you know, having the usual day he has on the ground? Yeah, they did a couple good things. You know, they had a couple spies on him, you know, in the passing game for sure. It, you know, could could have been where the defensive lineman was popping out of there or it was uh, one of the linebackers um, did a couple of nice things there. Dropped a couple safeties in uh, also to, to, to spy on him that way, but uh, – it was uh, overall good plan. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. I, I thought that Leslie did, you know, uh, what he normally does. You know, played good, sound, fundamental, fast football. Um, but uh, that's what I saw. Was there anything different than you experienced last or from any other games this season? What they did on, on Saturday? 
Um, no, no, we've, we've seen we've seen pretty much everything, but uh, they just they just executed well. Uh, it's been nine games where a defensive lineman, well, only twice in the last nine games, a defensive lineman has registered a sack. Is that a byproduct of this is as far as this group up front can go in this scheme, or is there something that they're not doing to be able to generate that pressure? Yeah, I would just say let's let's go back to the fundamentals. Are we getting great get off? You know, are we doing a great job of you know getting to our into our rush? You know, and then really creating and generating a move, you know, and then if you get stuck with that move, what's your second, what's your secondary move off of that? So uh, we're just going back to the basics. Uh, I really don't have an answer for you, you know, you know, in terms of why the number is what it is. You know, again, we've been pressuring more, uh, doing different things. Brisker got another sack yesterday on that pressure backed up, which is good to see. Um, and we'll continue to do that, uh, but certainly want to generate pressure with those front four. Coming out of the bye, that up front, you might there might be some adjustments, some guys moving around. I know Angela Blackson was a healthy scratch this past week. Was that because you've seen more from Armin Watts in practice, and you want to give him a better look up front? Yeah, I would just say everything's based off practice, and Angela could be up this week. You know, let's let's uh, leave it open. Let's see how they practice this week. Let's see how they generate pass rush. Let's see how they play the run. You know, playing the runs as important as getting pass rush right now for us. So it's uh, it's it's both things. So we'll see how they practice, and we'll we'll decide what we're going to do on the inside there. You've talked about your perspective throughout the season, understanding kind of the plan of the path forward as you guys build and establish what you want to. Who have you leaned on in terms of your inner circle or your football circle to really kind of uh, to keep that perspective strong? Yeah, just my mentors that I've had over the years, you know, um, and I just call those guys, talk to them. It's, it's important for me to be able to stay connected with those guys as much as I can, either via text or, or you know, through uh, phone conversations. Uh, but uh, it's always important to do that because those guys have been through it. Um, you know, if it's Coach Dungy or, or Coach Pinkle, whoever that might be, um, I always lean on those guys that have been in, in this situation, um, you know, head coaches for a long time, and, and they certainly have great wisdom that they uh, impart. So it's really good. Is there anything any one of them has kind of imparted on you that's really kind of stuck with you? Yeah, just stay the course. Just stay the course. Uh, you, you're doing the right things. Um, your systems are sound, um, and just stay the course. You know, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Make sure the guys are doing the basics. Uh, make sure they're doing the rudiments of the game. Um, make sure they're playing hard. You know, and and, and uh, you know, just doing the fundamentals and techniques the right way. And uh, you're building a foundation, and that's that's the biggest part of it. And that's something you can stand on in, in the future. What went into the decision to give Dieter a shot at left guard uh, in, in the second half there? Uh, it was rotation. It was just rotation there. You know, I know that Schofield went went hurt hurt his thumb a little for a second. We, we ended up sliding him over there for a sec, but then it, it was just really just a rotation at left guard. I'm sorry, like what specifically from practice or anything that you saw for, for Dieter specifically? Yeah, just that Dieter did a nice job. You know, Dieter did a nice job. We thought he warranted a rotation in there with Larry, so it was uh, it was just that. It's everything I said, everything's based off practice. Is Leatherwood just not there yet at the guard position? I know that uh, Luke had said he'd been working in on some of the interior positions. Yeah, yeah, he has. I th think it's good to keep him. You know, we do had worked him in there before that, but then he's been at right, and we just thought that uh, the way everything came down last week, that uh, Riley was going to be in there playing. And, um, if you guys, if you guys were to win the next two games. I know that would accomplish the short-term goal yeah. of winning those games. Would you see long-term value in that, winning, getting five wins a season versus getting three, or is it irrelevant? You yeah, I would. I would see term. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. I, I would. I would see value in that because we have to learn how to finish. You know, we were at the game yesterday or two days ago, uh, uh, but uh, you saw it, right? It was the fourth quarter, eight minutes to go. It was 21-13, right? We got the ball. And you know we got to learn how to finish. You know we got to learn how to finish there. I know that when it was 21-10, you know of course we got the, you know we didn't get the replay on the fourth down, uh, right there on the fourth and three decision. We went for it and they called it short. Uh, two plays later we intercepted it and then we end up you know getting a field goal out of that drive. So um, they're getting close to really understand how to finish the game. You know when you finish with game-defining execution, that's what you finish with. You you finish in those moments that the plays when they matter in the fourth quarter. We execute, and to me, um, these next two games are just about that: being able to execute in those game-defining moments, um, those plays that matter, and getting it done. And to me, that's that's important going going forward to the future. Matt, uh, Nathaniel Hackett, uh, like yourself, first-time NFL coach, first-year coach. He was fired today. I know coaches, whether you know them or not, are a pretty close-knit fraternity. But does that does that ex situation does that give you a greater appreciation for what you're doing in a really difficult year? You know, three and Whatever, and just how, how difficult it is just to 
succeed? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I really think about it that way, uh, Mark. But uh, I would say this: that I do have appreciation for our coaches uh, that are on this staff, on the Chicago Bears staff, and the players. You know, because we've been focused and we've been uh, their morale's been high the entire year. The guys have been uh, going about their business. They're playing hard. They're playing physical, and uh, we just got to do a better job of of finishing the games and executing at, the, at those defining moments. Like I said, but uh, I am proud of those guys of how they've operated all year. How do you think you've been able to keep morale this high? This is the most you've ever lost before, and I imagine it's probably miserable. Um, but to be able to project a, an aura of confidence and yeah. positivity, how do you how do you do that? Yeah, uh, I, like I said before, it's just about really just uh, focusing on the individual guy to start, um, having a lot of conversations with in, each individual guy to make sure he's squared away. Um, and then it's about practice habits. It's about having that championship habit mentality where we're going to go about biz- our business the way we're going to go about it. We're going to be on time. We're going to be respectful. We're going to work hard. And we're going to go on the field. We're going to work our tail off. And we're going to be focused in the meetings. Um, and we're going to take one day at a time. Like right now, we're going to prepare for Detroit, get ready for our great Wednesday practice, and move to Thursday, Friday, and then go, go kick it off. And uh, it's about sticking with the process. When you guys drafted Kyler Gordon, I remember one of the things you talked about was that positional flexibility mm-hmm. inside, outside, and, and due to the injuries, him having to, to slide outside. What do you like about seeing him at that outside corner? Spot? Yeah, I think it's great uh, experience for him. You know, now that you know, we put a, a couple corners on on the IR there. So for me, it's it's really good. So it's, it's just going to expand him a little bit more. Um, and you saw the outstanding interception he had yesterday, and uh, it, he's going to have to use a different you know skill set out there. Um, so I think to me it's just going to help him grow. Um, you know he's got high energy. Um, you know he's really uh, really good at you know his fundamentals, his techniques. He's getting better there, and he's got he's a ball hawk guy. You know so that's why we brought him here. So he's proven that, and he's exciting to watch. And I'm excited about the last two games for him. What you said before, um, you know how maintaining positivity with that. We know professional athletes hate losing. Um, how you sort of convey that? It's just you know stick with it, part of the plan. You know what's what kind of things do you emphasize with these kids? Yeah, just daily habits. You know, just daily habits. You know, it's about you know I was talking to him today about choices. You know, you have choices. So people, everybody thinks they have a lot of different choices in life. You know, I can do this or I can do that. Well, if you if you want to be the best at your position, okay, if you want to be the best football team you can be, you don't have that many choices. What you have is your work habits how you're going to work every single day, how you're going to work and focus right now here. And uh, to me, that's what it's all about. And if you do that time and time again, you're going to produce a good product. Going back to your, Last one. your corners, uh, how did you think Blackwell and, and Jalen Jones had that? Good. good. You know, I wish Jalen would have made that, that, that catch. You know, so we got to, you know, work on getting, you know, you know, putting our hands up together there and, and, you know, snagging that interception because that would have been a really good, really good play um, for him. Uh, but uh, we think he's covering well. He's tackling well. Um, he's doing a good job in there. And then Blackwell did a nice job inside again, like he did two weeks ago at Green Bay. He's tackling well. He's covering. Um, he's doing a good job of pressuring when we send him in there. Um, so both those guys are really, really doing a good job. And they're doing really good on special teams, too. You know, they're really contributing in that way, too. Okay.